Gardner is an IT specialist. He's a product of Achimota Secondary School and Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He has a blistering career. And unfortunately, he resorted to drugs and internet fraud. He's currently serving two years in prison. What pushed you into drugs? After my sixth form education from Achimota Secondary School, uh, due to peer pressure, half parenting, because I had lost my father as then, I had to team up with friends just to put things together. And somewhere along the line, I fell victim to the use of drugs because I had a very close friend who was used to using heroin and cocaine. So for almost 18 to 19 years, I've been in a chain of drugs. I'm an addict with a high intake. What do my high intake? Which means I consume more stuff. I need to buy grams. I don't buy pinches, boosters, no. I buy enough so that I stay away from the ghetto for some time because of mm. police rampant mm. chasing and those things. Yeah, so at a go, um, how much were you able to, you know, buy at a go? I just want to have an at idea. At a go, a gram of, of, of okay. A gram of uh, cocaine, as at that time, was almost about eight hundred thousand to eight fifty. Which was a lot of money. Well, then. As at then, so I buy two grams cocaine, and I buy one gram of heroin. Heroin was very cheap. It was selling around four hundred, five hundred. Did you mix it? I don't mix it. The cocaine is a, a, a tranquilizer, and the heroin is a sedative. So when I tranquil which means it speeds the rate of reaction. Mm. But the heroin will sedate me to slow me down. Mm. So definitely after I use the cocaine, I have to sedate myself with the heroin just to be normal. Mm. How long did that uh, continue? Sedating you, hi, 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 how, do, how, how do you put it? Um, Highing you, sedating the, they you. Call, the euphoria. Exactly. That's so, what you so, want, so, the feeling. So how long did, did, did that continue? It depends on your intake. Mm. And with that consignment, it takes me a whole day. The next morning, I have to get the same thing. The same thing. The next morning, I have to get the same and then, thing. And then, and then um, well, you know, many people wonder uh, why you would spend a lot of money j j j just, no, for, no. If, just for, you know, just to increase. Uh, how, how, I want the term. The euphoria. The, the euphoria. Yeah. For what? Euphoria for what? You see, there is one thing related to drug addiction mm. the the you feel very different mm. because of the kind of secrecy in which you use your paraphernalias you use the kind of environment you hide yourself you see yourself a bit different let's uh, revisit your life a system administrator yeah you have what it takes you know um to be economically and financially independent of course but because of drugs yes you find yourself in prison yes casting your mind back yeah. how has your life been like when i look back to my drug days and i compare it to today i feel i'm better off i'm at peace good before we look at how peaceful you have become let's go back to the courts yeah when you were eventually taken to court, what happened over there? We went to court, they read the statement of offense, they asked me guilty or not guilty. All that time I was in the mood of techie. What's the, what's the meaning of mood of techie? The techie is the, the withdrawal symptoms when you don't get the drug. Mm. So still in my techish mood, they called the red statement of offense and everything and they asked me whether I was guilty or not guilty. I just pleaded guilty. Yeah, I, when, when was that? That was uh, 11th of June last year. So I thought when you plead guilty, they will come to amicable settlement with you and you go home. No, but, but you are highly educated. What made you think so? Because you tell a judge that you are guilty. It makes the work of the judge easy. I, 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 it makes the work of the judge very easy. Mm. After pleading guilty, I gave an explanation of mm. my drug background. Mm. When you were told, Kweku Gardner, yeah. you've been sentenced to how many years? Two years in prison. Two years in prison. Was your wife in court? 
My wife was not in court, but my mom was there. My sisters were also there. How did you feel? Very aggrieved. Very aggrieved? Yeah. With yourself? With myself, yes. Did you cry? I didn't actually cry, but tears, tears came. Because I've been a thorn in the flesh of my parents mm. and even in the society, the locality I live in. I right. have... Let's quickly go to fraud. Um, the drugs took a greater toll of your life. Yeah. Why did you decide to also go into internet fraud? Uh, because of the, I needed enough money to pay for the drugs that I, I, I'm craving for. So uh, I started through a friend. How much money did you get at, you know, at a point from hacking other people's accounts? Uh, it depends on the value in the account. Mm. And, uh, Can you give us an instance? Uh, I've made about 15 to 20 billion from a top company in Ghana, brewery. 15 to, to 20, 20 billion. billion. Old Ghana cities. Old Ghana cities. Are you sure of what you are talking about? I'm telling you reality. No. What? <laughs> what? What did you use? How did it come about? And what did you use that money for? I am telling you, all I use, I don't like, mm. I'm not the type that I keep running after women, but I have my wife, I'm content with that. So you are not into woman, womanizing? No, right? not at all. Now, 15 to 20 billion. What did you use the money for? I make my property, my house, fix it, everything up there made some small marketing thing for my wife because she's a caterer so and you loved your wife too. i loved my wife too with my daughters so that i wanted always any money i make i make sure something goes there because i had a thought that this mm. drug could just cut me off one day mm. what are these people going to live on if what, what, what was your wife aware you were into internet fraud yeah my wife did know what the, because what advice did she give you she 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 on several occasions asked me to stop because she sees me going to work but i come home with an amount of money she doesn't expect nobody takes that money at the end of the month what was the last straw that broke the camel's back i got to a level of fraud to the extent that even I can, I can come to your house and mount an AMA signboard in your house that it's a location for community hospital. Most fraudsters have links at the banks. Mm -hmm. So I don't even enter the banking hall. When you say um, that most fraudsters have links at the banks, yeah. what do you exactly mean? Are you trying to say that some of the workers in there... Yeah. Are complicit in some of these activities. Really, really. How are you able to engage them? Uh, uh, it's with I motivate you with money. I come, I open an account there. I deposit something small, two thousand, three thousand there, and I tell you, oh, in the next two three weeks, some six hundred or seven hundred will be coming. So try and clear that money. I want to. When you do that. I give you a percentage. Now, my third meeting with you, I'll sit down and let you know what is going on. I'm a fraudster. This is what I do. So any money that comes through that account, 10% is yours. Wow. So you clear the money. I come. If it's ready, you give me a call. I come and sit in my mm. car. You bring the money out. So I give you there, a percentage. there are always accomplices to uh, the, you know, within, within the yes. What advice would you give to many out there especially the youth who claim there is no job so engaging in internet fraud holds the key to their success fraud is not a resort or a relief from poverty no it will never end you nowhere than end you wearing the same uniform as i wear here i want to take this opportunity to to address our parents to have an equivocal relationship with their children, keep eyes on them because there are instances where your child goes out most often in the night, comes late and turns drunk, the parents don't care. All these things are the beginning of going wayward. So I want to address the youth that crime doesn't pay in general and drug addiction is a chain you would find very hard to break. Sister Sarah, Mrs. Sarah Gardner, 
and my two kids, Daniela and Princess. I want to take this opportunity to render a formal apology for misconducting myself as a father over all the past years. This time, it would never happen. I am currently at the Ewutu Camp prison farm. When a prisoner is sentenced, he either comes in to serve his term and goes, or he serves in hard labor. When he has to serve in hard labor, there are so many options. He either comes to the farm to work, as you can see some of our brothers working over here and being guarded by our prison officers. There are other vocations that they can be asked to undertake. We have decided to come to the prison farm to find out how the in hard labor tag usually works. I have with me Mohammed who was brought here for stealing. Let's talk to Mohammed and find out how the prison has indeed reformed him. Mohammed, assalamu alaikum. Mohammed, what brought you into prison? I went and stole someone's that's mobile phone with some laptops with money. It is only a mobile phone that they used to, to charge me at the court there. Why did you have to steal a mobile phone? Oh, Master, because not that time I was in, in a life that I, I can say that I'm in, in uh, drug. drug addict. Oh, okay. Like what, 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 kind of, what kind of drugs were you taking? Oh, that time I just smoked cocaine. Cocaine? Yes. How long did you use cocaine? Yeah, I started it from 2005. 2005? Yes. To what period? To this period. Period that they have sentenced me. Well, 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 when? So you November. came here in 2015. That's in Sawam, 2015. That I did them jail me. Mm. At in Sawam. Do you have a wife? Yes, I have a wife with uh, two ch uh, children. So why you you have a wife with two children? Why were you um, using cocaine? Oh, massa. Mm? Why? So because of the friends that someone sometimes. We involve ourselves with them. That is, they influence us to that kind of life sometimes. Mm. Yeah. And that life, to when you, you you involve yourself in, you cannot get or get yourself out just mm. like that, unless maybe something happens. Mm. Because you cannot stay out there and stop it like that. How were you able to snatch the phones? Uh, you know, uh, how, how oh, did you do it? Oh, master, I mean, now they, I, 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 they go I'm like. Night or daytime self, but I can't reach some place. I'll stop the day one. Why say no? I go do the night one. Why? Why did you decide to do the night one? Because I I, I, I see that at night you won't see me. Mm. Wait, 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 your 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 your, your, your house. Mm. Whether it be bugger proof or it be waiting or it, since if I see the thing with my eye alone there, I will use the ways and means to take it. Are you sure you have changed? Ah. Master, I said, I said, I asked my friends, I didn't even talk to, to them that at this time they, I surrender that life from the FA come out. I go use my mind, then I, I, I take watch my pickings. Mm. Uh, what has made you change? I remember, I see, even see my hand. See the, 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 your your see hand? You see, mm. see some blast. From working? From uh, uh, working. And still, it is how they work. You were given two years. Were you given two years in hard labor? Yes. Right. Mohammed, what advice do you have for your brothers oh. out there who are stealing, snatching people's phones, uh, engaged in armed robbery, entering people's houses? House. What advice do you have for them? Uh, my, my advice for them, my, 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 my sir, I, I'm sorry for those. Our, we sold our life or we do things that will not profit us, that will bring us trouble. 
So my advice, my friends says, they should find ways and means to come out from that life. That Sometimes, if I, you see, I'm, I want to even eat, say, sometimes it is hard, so unless, unless they're prison food. And they're prison food, so sometimes, you know, we, we, all of us, they fill them, they feed chop them. We are chopping good food outside, the food you want. But here, it's, it's not like that. So it's like they seize our freedom, or we don't have freedom. So you, you heard um, um, Mohammed, um, just as he said, um, all his freedoms have been taken away from him. So to those who uh, continue to engage in armed robbery, snatching of uh, mobile phones and other acts, anti-social, um, engage in anti-social vices, the farm will be your abode. You have no rights, whether you like it or not. Whether um, your, your hands are hurt, you definitely have to work. Unlike at home, where you have your liberty to do whatever you like, Mohammed doesn't have his liberty. But the prisoners have to sleep. Would you sleep around this time if you had your freedom? Obviously, no. That is the situation in prison. Whether you feel like sleeping or not, you definitely have to sleep. And if you saw the vigor within which the officer locked the door, it is evident that there is no compromise here. That is one of the pains being locked up in prison. Thank you.